everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all having a beautiful day so far. If you are new, my name is Emily, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some IKEA DIYs. These all turned out super beautiful, they're of course really affordable, and these are really cool IKEA hacks. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, and I hope you get lots of ideas from it. So let's go ahead and get started. For this IKEA DIY, we're going to be transforming the Ingo table. I found it at a thrift store for $25 and it was really nice and solid and just needed a freshen up. So I'm going to be going in with my electric sander along with 80 grit and 220 grit sandpaper. I am going to start off with the 80 grit first to get off all of the finish coat that was on here. You want to make sure that when you are sanding, you go in the direction of the wood grain. Never go horizontal to it because you will end up scuffing up that wood and you will not get those marks out. So just keep that in mind when you sand. Now I'm gonna go in with this tacky cloth. You can pick this up at the hardware store. Even Walmart probably has it. It's sticky enough and it basically picks up all of the dust off of the surface that you're working on. So go ahead and wipe down everything because you do not want any of that sending dust when you're going to be staining or painting your surface. So I ended up having Sherwin-Williams um, mix me a stain that was really dark to match some of the trim in my house. And I don't have a color for it because they mixed it to tell you the exact color of it. All I can say is you can tell which glove worked and which one did not. <laughs> so after about one good coat, it came out fairly nice, but it was a little bit streaky for me. So I let that dry and I'm going to go in with my Waverly chalk paint. I did water this down just a little bit because I decided I wanted to make the legs white and not stained. A little bit of this goes a very long way. I ended up doing two coats on the boards and also on the table um, bottom. In between coats, I did sand the surface with 220 grit. That way it'd be nice and smooth and it's personal preference. You can finish it off with a wax. After you are done sanding, of course, make sure you use a tacky cloth or wipe it down with something so that you can get rid of all that dust. I went in with my third coat of stain with a sponge brush just to get a little bit more of an even application. I normally don't do this, but with this stain, I preferred doing it this way. That way I could really brush it in and let it soak into the surface. And I actually let this stain sit a bit and then I would wipe it off. Typically I don't do that. I just rub it in with normal wind wax, but in this case I let this sit for a bit. Once that had dried for a full day, I went in with the Minwax Polyurethane One Coat. It's kind of like a triple thick um, varathane almost. And so it goes on white, but I promise you it dries clear, so don't panic. And again, you're gonna wanna use a sponge brush for this. Um, usually if I use a bristle brush, sometimes the hairs can come out, um, depending on what type of brush it is. And so I don't want that, I like the sponge brush. And when that dries, I go in with um, about 300 grit sandpaper and I give it a nice um, sand down, of course, in the direction of the grain of the wood. And then I wipe all that dust off and then I put on another coat. That way it's nice and smooth and it's protected. Um, sometimes you can just have to do one coat, it's up to you. I like my surface to be very protected, so I'll usually do two coats even if it just says to do one. Also when I'm applying the finished coat, I put it on fairly thick and then I like to go from one side to the other to get a nice smooth finish. This is how the table turned out and I could not be happier with it. I think it looks absolutely beautiful and it's a great way to transform a regular piece of furniture to fit your decor style. For the next IKEA DIY, I'm going to be using the Vigdis pillow cover and I'm going to be using my new cordless glue gun that I got from Sherbonder, who is actually sponsoring today's video and I'm super excited to be partnering with them. 
I've never had a cordless glue gun before and I'm super excited to be using their detail glue gun for this project and it holds its charge for two to three minutes when it's not on its stand. I'm also going to be using their fabric um, glue sticks for this but they also carry a wide variety of other glue sticks. I had no idea they had glow-in-the-dark ones. How awesome is that? They also have a huge variety of glue guns for you to choose from. Some are battery operated, some are cordless, some are corded. So whatever you need, Sherbonder has it. They make stuff for for construction, automotive, flooring, foam, product sprays, home repair, even hair extensions. So if you're in need of any type of adhesive for any type of project, look no further than Surebonder. The quality of their products is outstanding and I'm so excited to be able to work with them, especially for this project today and from here on out. I am again using the fabric hot glue that they sent me in the sticks and you just need a little dab and it dries fairly quickly and I'm going to tell you it does not come off so when you get ready to glue on a piece to a piece of material or whatever you're working on be prepared it's not going to come off you all know I have used regular hot glue for pillow projects before and I can usually rip that apart after a little while this does not budge so I'm really excited to be using the fabric glue sticks for this project so I'm just working out a pattern here you can do what works for you I started by doing some triangles and then I wanted to eventually make them into diamond shapes but I didn't end up having enough of the small little pom-poms so I ended up just kind of going with the flow with this um, like design and I like it and um, you'll kind of see how it unfolds so just get creative you don't have to do as many as I did you can do a completely different look to it so it's really just really fun to add these little <laughs> pom-poms onto the pillow thought it would actually be a really cute detail to take the larger pom-poms and start alternating them between the triangles and the diamond shape and I really like the way this ends up looking. I think in the um, end I would have just done the alternating pom pom so if you want a really simple DIY pillow just do that you don't have to do the triangles or the diamond shape but overall it's really cute a little glue gun hack for you is just to add a little dab of hot glue on there you guys taught me this and then it will glue the two sticks together and then they don't um, end up uh, running out so next I took some fringe that I actually got off of Amazon that I had left over and I'm just running that down the seam of the pillow so that way it will show on both sides whichever way the pillow is going to be and I'm just doing about two or three inches at a time and then pushing that trim down into the hot glue. I didn't burn myself at all and my fingers might be numb to it because I work with it so much but um, I don't find that the high temp is too hot for me unless I'm just holding my fingers there but the one side came together really nicely and now we need to finish off the other side so I'm just going to repeat that process and this is how the pillow came out and I think it's absolutely adorable. I love it. I think it's really girly and kind of flirty. You can customize to what you want. You can do different colors. For the next IKEA hack DIY, I'm going to be doing a little dresser flip to this Rast dresser. These are really inexpensive. They're around $40 and you can customize them a lot of different ways. And I like this one because it's a raw wood, so you can paint this, you can stain it, you can leave it natural if you want to, depending on what your home decor style is. So you're just going to start by putting it together. It'll probably take you around 10 minutes or so, nothing too bad. So before I was done putting it all the way together, I ended up taking the footboard of this 
and I wanted to change it up so it looked like it had legs and had a little definition versus just being a flat front. So I clamped it down onto my works table and then I drew out the design I wanted and then I took my jigsaw and started cutting along those lines that I traced onto it. And then once you get your first one done, you're going to trace it onto the second one if you happen to have two dressers. I ended up having two of these, so I wanted to make sure that it was the exact same for the other one. Once I got it all cut out the way I wanted, I clamped it down again and then took some 80 grit sandpaper and sanded down the rough edges. That way it'd be nice and smooth. Even though it's near the bottom of the um, nightstand, I didn't want it to be rough. So now I'm just going to finish putting this um, nightstand together and now I have more of a detailed leg to it, which I'm really happy about. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish this off and give it more of a modern rustic look. The next step in this process was to use some wood filler and the wood holes that were in the drawers, I'm not keeping those because I'm not doing the little knobs that it comes with. I filled it in on the front and then the back obviously to make sure that those were filled. You're gonna wanna scrape that down and then let that dry and then you will go in, once it's dry, the color has changed and you're gonna sand that down, wipe it clean. I'm going in with dark walnut and I'm gonna be staining my dressers. Now this is where you can get creative for your decor taste. You can paint these, you can stain them. Again, leave it natural, do what works for you. But I went ahead and just did all the front drawer faces and then the sides, whatever would show when I pull it out, I wanted to make sure that I stained those parts. I only did one coat of stain for this nightstand and then I'm going to take my foam brush with my one coat polyurethane that I used earlier. I'm going to add this on quite thickly. Again, it goes on white but it will dry completely clear. Get that on, rub it in, and then I'm going to do long strokes from each side going um, the direction of the wood grain and making sure it's nice and smooth and there's no bubbles. And to finish off the dresser, I'm going to be adding my own drawer pulls to this. So I'm just making a custom template. I went ahead and put the drawer pull on this uh, cardboard basically to make sure that it matched up correctly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take my cardboard that's the same size as my drawer front and I'm going to put that on. I add a piece of tape so that nothing, none of the wood splits and then hold that there and then I'm going to take my drill bit which is the same size as the drawer pull screw and drill that in. They do sell templates at the store but this one was a kind of a unique size. It was around 8 inches or so um, and so I wanted to just make my own. It's pretty easy to do. Some people say doing a third of the drawer length should be the size of the pool. You can do what works for you. That's what I did for this one. I'm so happy. A few small easy DIYs to this IKEA nightstand and it has a whole new look. And I love it. All these projects you can customize to your decor taste. Costs a few dollars to do and you have and a completely customized piece of decor for your home. I hope you all enjoyed these DIY IKEA hacks. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments below. So I hope you guys got lots of ideas from today's video. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you happen to miss my last IKEA hack video, it'll be linked here on the screen along with more videos down in the description box below. I hope you all have an amazing day. Stay healthy, stay strong, and I'll see you all in the next one.